Hi guys, welcome in my newly set up studio, especially for this content. Today, we are going to filter our dissolved gum arabic. So what we need for this are a few things. We need our gum arabic. We need a large enough bowl. We need a sieve. And we need something to filter it through. I use a piece of cheesecloth. Let's start putting things together. So, we start with a bowl. We hang our sieve in there. You can use any kind of paper that you can use as a filter. Make sure it's unbleached. Uh, you don't want to have bleach in your paint. I'm using a cheesecloth that I've folded in half. So it's actually fine enough to filter everything through. So we put this in here. We take our binder and we start pouring it in. going to do this in batches since I don't want to make any mess. Now you just need a lot of patience. As you can see this takes a lot of time. As I said before good things take time and it's really worth it to just wait a while for your binder to be thoroughly filtered. Like I mentioned, we need a lot of patience for this. Don't forget about the fact that gravity can be your friend here. So when it's a little low, just pour a bit of extra dissolved gum arabic to it. So the gravity does a little bit of work for you. You can also choose for not folding your cheesecloth in half. This makes the filtering go quicker, but you might need to filter it twice or even more. Make sure that the liquid that you're left with is fully without any debris. You don't want to have any tree bark or little insects from the acacia tree in your binder. So make sure that you just either have patience for waiting when you fold it in half or filtering it multiple times. It's really worth it that you're absolutely certain that you're left with an absolutely clear binder. It's also worth mentioning that you don't want to submerge your sieve in the binder. So you might want to raise it a bit. When you made a contraption such as this, make sure you're in a room free of dust and there's no animals or kids nearby. Now the gum arabic is filtered and we're left with a clear liquid that is ready to be mixed with our other ingredients. So now we're ready to add the other ingredients. Glycerin, honey, and I'm using synthetic oxgirl and my preservative. So now we just combine the ingredients. We have the gum arabic, the other ingredients, and I'm using a spatula since I want to get everything out of there. Now, give it a good mix. I want to make sure that no honey sinks to the bottom. When I pour it in bottles, that's quite an important step. We can mix it in the bottles by just shaking the bottles. But if honey sinks to the bottom and it gets stuck, in the bowl, the proportions are off. And you should be left with a beautiful golden watercolor binder. Congratulations, you just finished your first step into making handmade watercolor paint. I like to keep my binder in jars like these. But before you can do that, you need a funnel of some sorts. I'm using the collapsible one but use whatever you like.
Make sure when you port your binder into a container or a jar that you keep it in a dry and cool place and leave it out of the sun. You don't want anything to be happening or cultivating in here. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tell everyone you know about it that this is the place to learn how to make your own watercolor paint. So we made the binder, we looked at the tools, and now we're ready to work with pigments. So if you don't have any pigment yet, please check out the links down below the video for great sources. They are affiliate links, so they help me with a little bit of income, but they're great sources for your pigments to get started with. The next video will be the video where we'll start making paint. So make sure you have everything needed at home or wherever you work. Get your binder ready. Make sure you have your pigments. Prepare your slab. Use something as a muller or use a muller so we can start making paint. I do sell pens myself. Uh, they are made 3D printed with recycled PLA, polylactic acid. It's a bioplastic, which is biodegradable under certain circumstances, but they are great alternatives to the factory made plastic waste uh, pens that you buy very cheap though. Uh, uh, somewhere abroad um, they are very good to start with um, if you want to get a little bit more environmental friendly uh, you can choose for my pens but you can literally use anything seashells uh, you can buy ceramic pens uh, you can even fold your own pens out of paper or cardboard there's loads of options but I just want to point out that I do print pans and you'll help my business with them. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tell everyone you know about it that this is the place to learn how to make your own watercolor paint. So we made the binder, we looked at the tools and now we're ready to work with pigments. So if you don't have any pigment yet, please check out the links down below the video for great sources. They are affiliate links, so they help me with a little bit of income, but they're great sources for your pigments to get started with. The next video will be the video where we start making paint. So I really look forward to make paint with you. Whichever pigment you choose, let me know in the comments down below what you want to get started with, and I'll see you next video. It's a sif, not sith. Uh, don't choose the dark side.